G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Dinky Die review. I hope you're all doing tip fucking top. We got a kit today, a Boro mod and a Boro tank to have a squiz at from Steam Crave. It is the Messen AIO kit. Steam Crave have been messing around with the uh, the Messen line. Uh, there's been some RTAs and now they've done a Boro bridge and this uh, Boro mod. It's 21700 and the, uh, the bridge in there, well, you got the option for a Messen mesh deck or what I've been using uh, a larger sort of postless deck which I've actually managed to squeeze a dual coil build into so not too many Boro bridges you can get uh, a dual coil build in so that's what we've fucking done here so as I said it is a single 21700 mod uh, it does up to 100 watts the board they've got in here obviously a single 21 you know 100 watts ain't gonna last you super long but uh, it does mean that if you want to pump out a little more uh, power up around that sort of 60 70 80 watts uh, you can do it which is exactly what I'm fucking doing here uh, I got me a 0.27 ohm as I said dual coil uh, alien build in here and I'm running it at uh, a hefty 70 watts which is doesn't sound crazy but you know for a boro mod 70 fucking watts um, in a boro bridge is a, a fair fucking bit of power let's take it for a little ripperoo. Pumping out the fucking vapor, as I said, for a Boro device, 70 watts is pretty fucking high, and so uh, it's a uh, it's a cloudy little fucking kit. This thing. Now you have got the uh, mesh deck included, which I'm not going to do because you cunts know I don't like mesh. It just doesn't it doesn't gel with me. It's never warm enough. So I'll leave the mesh for uh, those that like uh, to review mesh products. Uh, we're going to focus on the uh, the dual coil or the the, the postless bridge that they include, and uh, obviously the mod itself. We'll get down and have a squizzed it all in a second. But before we can do that, we gotta have a fucking beer. We've got a big old can of beer all the way from New York. It's called Even More Hydra. It's a fruited sour ale. It's a collaboration between Evil Twin Brewing, who I'm uh, quite familiar with, and uh, Mortalis Brewing, who I'm not so familiar with, uh, both located over in uh, New York. A sour ale brewed with raspberry, blackberry, blueberry, cacao nibs, and marshmallow. Sounds pretty good to me. A chocolatey, fruity sort of marshmallow beer. Seven fucking percent is the uh, alcohol content. Let's just see how it fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. Cause is all that's it. Oh, look at the complexion on that. It's like blackberry soup. A very dark and uh, thick reddish complexion. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, I get like a fruit chocolate kind of aroma off of that. You can smell both the fruitiness and the uh, the chocolatey aromas. A fucking cheers. Oh, that is fucking, that is awesome. It's like a black forest cake. That's what it sort of tastes like. It's got that blackberry and the, uh, the raspberries in there, and then you get chocolate, thick, creamy, quite a sort of, yeah, dark chocolate, I reckon. It's like a, a black forest cake. Berries and chocolate. Very, very well done there. Got a thick sort of mouth feel to it. A little bit of a, a fizziness there, though. It has a, a good bubble still to it, but it is rich with um, very much that blueberry, blackberry, and raspberry, and then it finishes with a, a creamy, dark chocolate. And the uh, the marshmallow, I guess, is giving it that sort of creaminess, a sort of fluffy kind of feel, and a little bit of a, a sort of sweetness. That is a fucking rich ass fucking sour. That is, um, that's different. The chocolate and the berries, that's working. Let's pair it up with a liquid. I was expecting more of a fruity beer than a chocolatey cakey beer. And so I uh, had a fruity liquid going in the uh, Messen, the uh, rhubarb and pear flavor from Dark Star. Really been enjoying this liquid. I think it'll still go well with this beer, but I uh, almost feel like I should have had more of a dessert flavor uh, to, uh, to mix with it. But we'll see how a bit of rhubarb and pear goes with the berries and chocolate. That works quite fucking nicely. Kind of chilling out the chocolate flavors a little bit and adding a bit more of a, a fruitiness in there. The, the pear, I think, is going very nicely with those fruits. And yeah, the rhubarb kind of hanging around as well. 
Yeah, I'm really liking that. The the blueberries and raspberries with the, the pear and rhubarb, that's fucking nice. As I said, the chocolate, kind of a little bit less dark and just becoming a little bit more kind of a, a milky, creamy chocolate. That is a nice little fucking pairing. Fruits and chocolate, who doesn't like that? Anyway, enough waffling over this shit. Let's get down here up and close. We're going to have a good squiz at uh, all the bits and bobs. There's quite a bit of stuff in the kit, as Team Crave usually do. We'll go through all that. We'll talk some pros and cons. Let's have a sticky beak. Okay, fucking dokie dickheads, this is the packaging. Your mess and AIO will come in. Usual, a big old box from Steam Crave. Looks like it comes in black, gunmetal, red, blue, and purple. I've got the gunmetal as you can see. Let's see what you get inside. Well, you got the mod, you got the bridge, you've also got the mesh deck, a spare tank section, adapter so you can screw it onto a mod and pulse and pinch your coils. You get some Clapton coils, some mesh and some cotton for your mesh, a tool for installing the mesh, a tool for installing the coils, spare o-rings, screws and gaskets, an alternative front panel for the mod, 18650 battery adapter, 21700 battery wraps, USB-C charging cable, user manual and a steam crave sticker. A whole lot of stuff, but let's get into it. All right, well, we might start with with the bridge, get that out of the way. It has its own tank, so it's not a bridge that you'll be able to install in your own Boro tank. It's got its own little tank section, base section, bridge, all the rest of it. You've got a uh, PCC top to it, polycarbonate top there. Uh, I gotta point out a little bit of a shit finish here. Uh, it's the same on the spare. There's like a mold mark. This here is part of the mold, that that little rough, yeah, that's kind of shit. It just looks a bit shit, looks a bit amateur compared to other Boro tanks. But anyway, it'll hold five milliliters of liquid. You got your fill port here, you flip that out, fill it up, away you go. You can disassemble this tank from the, uh, the chimney, but you got to unscrew this little flathead kind of um, flush nut. Uh, and you get a spare tank, which is kind of handy. You got your airflow on the front there, Steam Crave engraving, and you've got the same on the back. Now, these little fins here, these little fins, they, they sort of go around the, from the front to the side. The idea there is to allow air to get around the side here and get to the back. But as you can see, they, they kind of stop short of getting to the actual back holes. So the idea here is, and we'll jump over to the mod, the idea here is for these fins to essentially only work with the mod itself, with the mess and mod. Because as you can see in here, there's this little ridge that goes around the inside of the compartment for your tank. And what that does is it sort of lifts the back of the tank off of the back of this section so that when this goes in, if we just undo this flush nut here a little bit, when this goes in here, it allows air to travel down the sides of these slits and basically pop out just at the edge there where that rib is. When you put this tank in any other sort of Boro mod, like a billet box or something like that, that has a completely flush back to it, has a, has a flat section where the tank goes in, this gets zero airflow. You just, you just get nothing because this is sitting right up against the back of the, the tank section, so you just get no airflow. Uh, if you've got a mod that has you know, open sides, like this one here, be sitting in here, you'd be getting airflow from both sides, no problems. But if you're using, you know, pretty much 90% of the other Boro mods out there that have a, you know, a flat uh, compartment, you're not going to get any airflow. So um, you do get airflow when using it in the Messen AIO around the back, but uh, most of your other mods, unfortunately, you're not going to get airflow from. Anyway, uh, there's your pin there. That's going to make contact with the uh, mod. And to get to your deck, we just wiggle out the base here. Now, your liquid is going to come down from above. So you've got the tank here. You've got these large sort of rectangle oval shaped holes. That's where the liquid's going to be coming down from. It's going to go straight down the sides. And it's going to line up with this little tray here. 
going to go into that tray and that is essentially where your cotton is going to be sitting. Because you've got your coils here, cotton's going to be tucked into this little slit, liquid comes down and it gets to that slit from underneath. So fairly straightforward principle for the wicking and as you can see with this large rectangle here and this large rectangle here, it allows a, a real good amount of liquid to get down to your cotton. So wicking has not been an issue for me with these dual coils. You've got a postless deck design, clamping from the sides here, grub screws, very easy to install coils. Uh, you'll be able to see me installing these and wicking them for the first time in the live build stream that I did a few weeks ago. I'll put a link in the description to that if you want to see uh, how I did it. But it's a lot like most of the other sort of postless decks that Steam Crave do. You've got four terminals, you've got uh, four legs from your dual coils and you just drop them in there and it is easy enough to clamp it and easy enough to wick it. Very, very simple and easy to wick. Uh, now these coils that I'm using here, these come to me courtesy of uh, MTN Coils over in the UK. Uh, these are the Orbit coils that he does. 0.6 ohm uh, is for a single coil, all right? So individual coil is 0.6. Uh, if you're putting two together, you'll get about a 0.3 ohm. These came in at 0.27, so right around that 0.3 sort of mark. Uh, and they have been fantastic in here. Now, I went for a, a fairly compact coil to, uh, to fit them in, but having a look at the deck space uh, and the space that you've got in the, uh, the chamber here, you could go a little bigger. These are, um, you know, sort of nice little micro uh, Claptons, I think they are. They might be framed. Doesn't actually tell me what type of coils these are, but I'm pretty sure these are a Clapton or maybe a frame staple. They've certainly been performing fantastically. Very, very fine gauge. Yeah, there you go. That's a better look at it. Very, very fine gauge wrap on it. These have been beautiful. Very, very nice flavor. Perfect fit in here, but you could go a little bit bigger if you want to go slightly bigger. Maybe not 3mm IDs, but some thicker gauge wire with a 2.5mm ID, you could certainly fit in here without any trouble. Uh, so that's what I've been using. They do also include the mesh deck, which works almost exactly the same. You've got about the same amount of width here for your cotton. You've got the same little tray down the bottom. The only difference is you've got a, um, a set of clamps for your mesh. All right, so pretty straightforward. The, um, the mesh is gonna fit into this slit here, or this clamp here, and the clamp on the other side, and uh, away you go. So much like what they've done with their other mesh decks, but you can't snow me, I don't like mesh, so I haven't been using it. Uh, so that really is the, uh, the Messen Boro RBA, not a whole lot to really talk about there we will jump on over to the mod so we'll put the panel that it sort of comes stock with back on the front here it is 21700 it is unfortunately uh, mostly zinc alloy the main body here zinc alloy oof it is fucking heavy i gotta say that it is a very heavy mod that's probably my main gripe this is definitely zinc alloy the door here feels a little bit lighter, uh, and the way that it's sort of anodized black leads me to believe that this might be aluminium. You've got a little mess and AIO engraving on the side there. I think that that is aluminium, uh, but this main body of the mod is definitely uh, zinc alloy. You can just feel it from the weight. Uh, we might just chuck a battery in here. Got this little ODB pickle rick wrap. Um, and that just slots on. You've got magnets, four of them on the door. And I've got to say, the door is nice and snug. There's really not much movement there. It is very nice and snug, so I do like that. The front panel on this, pretty sure this is zinc alloy as well. Uh, it does have a little window here, and it has an airflow adjustment dial, but it just, this looks, I'll be honest, it looks shit. Um, it looks like a welding mask. <laughs> this... This looks like, you know, I'm waiting for this thing to flip it up and say like, yeah, how are those welds? It's fucking, it's, it looks like a welding mask. That's what it looks like to me. Um, it's ugly. Or like a dumb little face with this little smile here and his boop, boop, little fucking nose there and his fucking 
it's like a cyclops dog or something. Um, <laughs> welding mask, cyclops dog, it's ugly. You turn the dial and as you can see, you can adjust the airflow, uh, which I guess is a, a handy feature that some other bridges, you know, mods don't have. But yeah, it, it sort of slots in there. Um, it's again, fairly secure. They do also include an alternative. Now this is plastic. This is a plastic door. Uh, it's just a really open window. So it allows a lot more airflow. I definitely notice more airflow with this than I do with this slot here. So depending on what you like, but if you like lots of airflow, then this one is gonna be for you. You got a fire button, you got a negative button, you got a positive button, you got a USB-C uh, port there for charging. And then if we flip it over, we have the screen and the usual markings on the base here, um, which I don't quite understand. You could have put those in here. There's no need to put those on the base. Put them on here. It's just, it's just, bit, oh, look at that. That's not good, Mr. Bogan. Look at that battery wrap, doesn't it? You should rewrap your batteries when this happens. All right, <laughs> I'll be doing that, don't worry. Uh, I know all the battery fucking uh, Nazis will be telling me, hey, hey. Fix that battery wrap. Yeah, rewrap your batteries. All right, uh, let's have a look at the uh, board here. So we've got a uh, resistance up the top. You've got a battery um, percentage or, or battery bar on the side there. You've got a puff counter underneath there, your wattage, your voltage, and the seconds of your last vape. Uh, kind of DNA-ish sort of screen, but it's obviously not. It's a proprietary chip. So you can adjust your wattage in one watt increments. I think it's one watt all the way down. Yep, all the way down, one watt increments. It does go all the way up to uh, 100 watts and it does scroll nice and fast. There's your max power for you. Uh, and then if we want to access the menu, we give the fire button one, two, three clicks and we go to voltage mode. Voltage mode will allow you to run obviously in volts all the way up to eight volts which is kind of cool if you like voltage mode. It certainly gives you plenty of voltage there. One, two, three clicks again. Flick over to uh, temp control. You've got temp control stainless steel. From what I can tell, there's no way to adjust the uh, wattage output in temp control mode. You just basically have control over temperature and it's going to sort of allow or allocate the appropriate wattage depending on your temperature. Um, which is not ideal for those that like temp control. Usually you want to have a bit of control on the wattage. You've got uh, temp control nickel and temp control titanium. And then we move into bypass mode, which is going to give you the raw voltage in the battery. At the moment, my battery is uh, fairly high and it's going to give me four volts. And then we flick back on over to uh, wattage mode. So you've got the three modes there. If you hold down the fire button and the uh, negative button, you can lock everything. Oh, no, sorry, you lock the positive and negative buttons. You can still fire it. So fire button and negative will just lock the, uh, the positive and negative buttons. Hold the same again to unlock. There we go. If we hold down uh, the fire button and the positive button, you can clear the puffs. Well, it says you can clear the puffs. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't quite register, but there we go, we've cleared the puffs. Uh, and if we hit the positive and negative buttons together, we can flip the screen if you want to orientate it the other way. Um, and that is really about it. One, two, three, four, five clicks, we'll turn it off. Five clicks, we'll turn it back on. Uh, so pretty simple pretty easy to navigate our board but um yeah that that really is about it for the mod and for the uh the boro bridge uh forgot to mention it does have a flush nut up the top here that's probably something we should have gone over before we got to the board uh, it's not really a flush nut though it's not flush because even with no bridge in there that's the furthest i can screw it down with no bridge installed so with a bridge in there, it's definitely not going any lower than that. So you've always got this ugly, annoying lip. Uh, it means if you want to use one of your own drip tips on here, for example, this one from Monarchy, you have a god ugly fucking gap and fucking ring. So yeah, the flush nuts 
are uh, fucking bullshit. Um, will it work with a flush nut after market? Let's have a look. No, unfortunately not. Uh, this flush nut here is one of my favorite flush nuts that I own. I know that it works with all of my billet boxes and all of my other Boro mods, and it always sits flush. All right, it always sits flush with any bridge that I've used. It's always been uh, a really nice flush fit. And as you can see, it's not flush with the Messon um, bridge in there. So yeah, the the tolerances or the, the sort of basically the, the di dimensions on the, the threading um, with bridges, is it's off, it's off. And it's you pretty much guaranteed to not get a flush fit regardless of uh, what kind of nut you use in here, whether it's the stock one or it is uh, something aftermarket. So that is a, a big con for me, uh, not being able to put your own um, flush nut in there and get a nice flush fit. And, and even with the stock one, obviously, you're not going to get a nice flush fit. So that is um, that is very annoying there, Steam Crave. Should have thought about that a little bit more. But anyway, uh, that's the flush nut 510 situation, and that is the fucking Messen. AIO and the uh, the Messon RBA. So with that, dickheads, um, I think we might fucking wrap it up, jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads, the Messon AIO kit. There's obviously two parts to this. You can get the kit, which comes with the bridge, or you can get the bridge separately. I don't think you can get the mod just on its own. I think it always comes with the uh, the bridge. But let's get into the pros and cons. I guess we'll kind of divide it into two sections. Let's talk about the, the bridge first. Uh, if you're looking for a dual coil uh, Boro bridge, then there's not a whole lot you know, of options out there. Typically it's single coil, uh, but this is giving you quite a bit of space in there. Uh, and I managed to get two, two, two coils, no real problems at all. If you want to see me installing these coils, I'll put a link into the description for the live build stream that I did a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, it was a piece of piss, very easy to build. And if you like higher wattages, and you're looking at Bora devices thinking, these are all bloody single coils, I want something with a dual coil. This is, you know, one of the few choices and it's doing it pretty fucking well, I gotta say. Um, I probably haven't been vaping it around 70 watts the whole time. I think I've been really liking it around that 50, 60 watts sort of mark, but I'm at 70 watts now, 0.27 ohm uh, build in here, just to show you that it can keep up the wicking uh, at that sort of wattage. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive, I gotta say. Uh, for a, a higher wattage uh, Boro bridge dual coil option, definitely a thumbs up. Uh, if you're looking for something a bit cloudier than uh, your typical Boro bridges, certainly this would be a good option. Airflow is also very smooth. It's one thing I do really like about it. The honeycomb design really smooths out the airflow and it's got a reasonable amount. Now, if you saw my live build stream, I thought that maybe it was restricting the airflow because you know the way that the airflow is designed with these little kind of slits on the side that go around to the back. I was thinking they're not really allowing air to get to the back, uh, you know, airflow slots. But if you if you look in the up and close, you can see there is a little cutout in the back of the compartment there, which does let air through. Because if I block off the front airflow, so there's nothing coming through the front, it is still letting a significant amount of air through. So they have thought about things. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll eat me fucking uh, words initially and say that they have designed it in a way that allows to air to get through the back. Now, it does restrict it a little bit, I think, but uh, it's still letting a fair bit through. So there is a, a fair bit of air here for a direct lung inhale. And with that honeycomb design, it is real nice and smooth. So airflow and the ability for wattage, um, you know, high wattages, definitely a thumbs up. Flavor is very good. You know, it's it's a higher wattage, you know, 
vape. So you'd expect the flavour to be pretty decent. Uh, but it's on par with you know some of those sort of smaller, more condensed uh, dual coil RDAs. You're not going to be able to put stomping massive coils in here, but uh, I think the flavour is very, very nice um, if you're looking for that direct lung kind of experience. In terms of building and wicking, as I've already mentioned, very easy to set up, uh, very easy to uh, install your coils, get your cotton in there. Capacity is pretty decent at five milliliters. That's definitely a fucking pro ski, and it seems to be fairly well built. Um, the bridge. And obviously another pro ski would be that you get two decks with it. You can run uh, the mesh deck or you can run the sort of postless regular coil deck. Um, I'm not a fan of mesh so it doesn't really matter to me but if you are someone that's you know wanting to play around with both styles the fact that you get uh, both of those options there has definitely got to be a pro ski. So cons, what could I complain about on the bridge? Not a whole lot to be honest. I think it's doing a good job of what they intended it to be and that is a, a dual coil uh, Boro bridge. Uh, it does have uh, maybe a bit more of a, a higher wattage, you know, larger coil orientation. So if you're wanting to put something small in there, a, a single coil, a small single coil, you're probably not going to get the flavor that you want. It does like a reasonable amount of wattage as well. I found it sort of 30 watts and that sort of thing. It wasn't so great, but once you get up around that 40, 50, 60 watts, uh, it is pretty tasty. So it's definitely sort of got its own little niche uh, with the um, dual coil sort of deck design there. Given that the airflow on the back is pretty much flush with the, the, the back of the tank, um, you're not gonna be able to run this in other Boro mods that have a flat back on the Boro section because you're gonna restrict the airflow. I've tried it in a few different mods and it doesn't allow enough air or really any air to get around the back unless you've got the back of the compartment open. You know, some of your, your Boro uh, mods are like this, where you've got, you know, a straight hole right through. And that's going to allow air from both sides, no problems. Obviously, with the Messen AIO, it's got that little kind of cutout, that little indent in there that allows air to get around the sides and then get into that sort of cavity. But there's plenty of Boro mods, like a billet box, for example. It's not going to work very well in simply because the, f the back of the compartment is going to be completely flush with the back of the uh, the bridge here and you're only going to get airflow from one side. So it is a little bit limited in terms of what you could use this bridge in. If you're using it in this mod, great. If you're using it in a mod with a, 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 an open back on it for the borer compartment, it'll work great. But there are some limits here in terms of um, how effective that airflow is going to be uh, in different Boro mods. But overall, not a whole lot of fucking uh, complaints. So let's talk about the mod itself. Uh, pros. 21700, that's going to be a pro ski for a lot of people. Uh, it certainly has a fair wattage range, up to 100 watts, uh, which a lot of uh, your Boro mods are not going to do. It comes with two face plates, that's kind of cool. You've got the adjustable airflow on one of those face plates, so that's definitely going to be a pro ski. All of the doors are quite secure. The, the back door where your uh, battery is, that's not going anywhere, nice and solid. The front doors, again, nice and solid. The board it comes with, uh, no complaints really in terms of the options. You've got temperature control there, you've got a voltage mode, you've got a bypass mode. Uh, it's easy to navigate, it's fairly simple, uh, and I like how the screen is sort of hidden on the base. So um, yeah, some decent little features. But what could I complain about with the uh, Messen AIO mod? I've got a few. Mainly, it is heavy as fuck. I feel like my arm's getting sore just sitting here holding it up. It's made of zinc alloy as opposed to an aluminium build or a 3D print or something like that. And you can really feel it. It is a very, it's the heaviest Boro mod that I've ever come across. It is very, very fucking heavy for a single 21700. Uh, uh, it, it feels a bit cheap as well because of that that extra weight in the uh, the zinc alloy. I'm also not a huge fan of the aesthetics. I think it's a little bit ugly, to be honest, especially that welding mask door. Uh, that just, <laughs> it looks so cheap on there. The silly little window that is sort of kind of, I don't know what it's doing. It's got a little kind of square, almost looks like it's trying to magnify something. The adjustable airflow dial, just kind of ugly. Yeah, it's a handy feature, I suppose, but it just looks ugly. 
uh, that, that door. It looks like a welding mask, so <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I've also heard from quite a few people and seen the, uh, the paint job was flaking off on some of the earlier ones. I think they may have remedied that because it hasn't happened on this one, but again, it comes down to that painted zinc alloy finish. The flush nut annoys me because it's not flush. It's raised up and that's with the bridge that it comes with. Uh, it's not hard to fucking get your tolerances right so that that flush nut on the top there actually sits flush with the top of the mod. Uh, so if you put a drip tip of your own on here, if it's a little bit wider than the one that they give you, you're gonna have this weird ugly gap or you're gonna have this stainless steel ring around the top and there's no other stainless steel on the mod so it just kind of looks out of place it's just a silly thing i don't know why you can't do a proper flush nut here steam crave would have looked a whole lot better so yeah for me it just feels kind of cheap kind of bulky and very very heavy uh it has some good features i guess and it does perform pretty well but um yeah it just it doesn't have that kind of nice quality premium sort of feel to it it feels like a a big heavy fucking zinc alloy mod. So what are these fuckers are gonna set you back? Well, I can't tell you which websites to get them from thanks to YouTube policies, but uh, the kit itself you can pick up for about $100 US, which is not bad for uh, a mod and a bridge. If you wanna get just the bridge on its own, I've seen that going for around about $30, uh, again, USD, which is pretty reasonable, pretty affordable for a, a, a Boro tank. So uh, yeah, price-wise, can't really complain, but I guess they can do that because it is, it's that zinc alloy. I just, I can't get past the fucking weight. It's so fucking heavy. But uh, that is about it really, dickheads. Um, decent performance, I will say that. Um, some questionable design, but if you're looking for an entry-level Boro mod with a 21700 that comes with a bridge that has two different decks, it's not a bad choice at all. Um, it's just one of those mods where I think if it was just refined a little bit, um, the materials used, some of the design on airflow and things like that on the bridge, it could have been a little bit better. So uh, with that dickheads, I'll bugger off, but I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this fuckwit gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support the channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, always helps me out. Share the video around because as you know, YouTube, they fucking hate us uh, vape reviewers and the algorithms work against us. So the more likes, subscribes and shares, the more people will get to our videos. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means nobody pays me to do reviews. I don't do any sneaky sponsorships or jumping the queue fees. I want to make sure I can give you a truly unbiased opinion on the products I'm talking about. But to keep it that way, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. Hit my Patreon page, a special content. I do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as my little uh, Patreon community. You can hang out with myself in the Facebook group in the Zoom room over the weekend. And those fuckers keep me doing my thing. So a big cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on your fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's a big, heavy fucking Boro mod, a cheap and cheerful pod, or something more premium. As long as you're not banging the fucking bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking eye.